welcome to my video discussing 4130 steel. Now, I'd like to go and start off by going and talking about alloys, as 4130 steel is an alloy, and understanding what an alloy is can help understand why certain things are done when creating 4130 steel. Now, an alloy is created by going and placing multiple different materials together in a system that contains a large amount of heat. Now, this is done because by going and using this heat, it can go and be absorbed as energy by the atoms and allow them to go and increase the amount that they are vibrating back and forth. By increasing this vibration, we can go and increase the fusion rate of the atoms into the crystalline structure of the iron, allowing for the new material, which is 4130 steel, to come out with properties from all of its parts. The, for 4130 steel, it takes a very specific combination of carbon, magnesium, phosphorus, sulfur, silicon, chromium, and iron. Now, the largest by percent of atoms would have to be iron, which is the case for almost for every single other steel. As iron is the base material that has other atoms introduced into it. Now, it makes up 97 to 98 percent of all the atoms in the system. The second largest only holds 1% of the atoms, which is chromium. Now, chromium is added to either go and add st strength or to give the new material a resistance to corrosion and rust. Now, it does this by forming an oxide layer on the outside of the material that stops oxygen from reacting with the other materials inside of it. it creates a barrier of sorts. But for 4130 steel, this isn't fully the case. It is definitely added to go and strengthen the steel. But only holds about one-tenth of the atoms needed in order to give it the resistance to rust and corrosion. The third lar largest is held by manganese, which holds about 0.5% of all the atoms in the system. Now, Manganese is typically added to high quality steel because it goes and increases the forging quality of the steel and adds a small amount of strength to it. The next, which is about 0.15 to 0.30 percent of all the atoms, is held by silicon. And silicon is added to go and add a small amount of strength that is barely noticeable and much more noticeably a larger resisti resistivity to electricity. That is followed up by molybdenum, which holds the same amount of atoms, but is only used to go and add strength to the material. Now, the next two is sulfur and phosphorus, which sulfur holds four, four hundredths of a percentage of the total amount of atoms and phosphorus holds 35 thousandths of a percentage. They make up very small but are still needed in order to go and achieve the effect of creating 4130 steel. Now this is all mixed together inside of a blast furnace. Now a blast furnace works on the principle of combustion to go and generate a large amount of heat in order to go and add the heat to the new materials in order to go and accelerate the atoms vibration. One second. <clears throat> now, this is done by going and using coke, which is a combination of coal and limestone that has been powderized and mixed together thoroughly and placed with inside the chamber and ignited. As this is ignited, Air is cycled through the system at a rapid rate, which goes and increases the amount of coke that is combusting at a given point by increasing the amount of oxygen that it can react with, thus giving it a much larger amount of heat, something that a normal furnace could not achieve. Now, as a byproduct of this reaction, this creates cyanide, sulfides, and ammonia, and many carcinogenic compounds. These can be very dangerous and very deadly and can lead to very various health defects such as cancer if it is brought inside of the body of any living being. Now, for creating this, 
a large amount of water is used. In 2020 alone, over 100 billion tons of water was used in the production of steel. And this has gone and caused it to become in contact with many of these compounds that are very dangerous if ingested. Thus, the water is given the term wastewater and has to be treated before it can be released back to the wild. But if it is released, this could lead to problems in either city centers or in just the native wildlife as they go and consume this. Now, the creation of steel has also led to a large amount of carbon being released, over 3 billion tons of carbon to be exact, being released into the atmosphere, thus further furthering the effect of global warming. Now, steel is, wide, is widely used throughout every industry, and thus it plays a very pivotal role in every part of our daily lives, as it is used commonly in every materials that we go and use at home, such as spoons and any other metal appliances, such as a stove or fridge. And because of this, it is very widely seen. What you don't hear about is the fact that you can go and recycle the steel. Now, steel is unlike other materials that you can go and recycle, as when steel is reforged and melted down, it can go and keep the amount of strength that it has as a standard. So, whereas other materials can go and lose their strength as they are recycled and put back into the workplace, steel can be remelted down and can be reused for new materials but still have the same amount of strength. Now, here we can go and see a stress strain diagram of 4130 steel. And you notice these different lines that are going up. Now this is at different temperatures. As when the steel is heated up, it can go and increase the amount of elongation or stretch that the material can go and suffer before it breaks. Now, the elastic modulus of 4130 steel is 140 gigapascals. The shear modulus is 80 gigapascals and has a hardness of 217 on the Bernal hardness test and 240 on the Noop hardness test. Now here, hopefully you can go and see pretty well, we have the different grain patterns that you can go and get with 4130 steel when it is first created. Now you can probably go and tell these are very small grain patterns. Now, if a much larger grain pattern is needed, you can go and heat treat the material, thus allowing the different grains to come together and form a much larger grain. And this can go and lead to crystals that can go and take up a large percentage in micrometers or even more. Now, a study was done by John Bernard at the University de Lille, and he subjected two pieces of 4130 steel to a cycling motion that was applying 250 kilonewtons to the steel. Now we had done this for the same amount of time for both materials and saw different results as the material that was heat treated went and took much longer to go and form cracks and ended up having cracks that followed the grain pattern instead of what he saw inside of a standard material and where he saw that the crack formed straight across perpendicular to where the force was applied. Now he thought this was strange and we came to the conclusion that by heat treating it you were able to go in much further increase the res how long it takes for creep to go into effect the steel itself. Okay, thank you for listening to my video, and goodbye.